Good morning. I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. Wonderful, beautiful day to honor our veterans on this Veterans Day. Thank each one that's here today. So I'd like to introduce our chaplain, Paul Lapierre, to lead us in prayer. Uncover. O God of hosts, we bow our heads in thankfulness for the victories thou hast granted us, to us and to all those people who have united with us to stamp out the evils of aggression, intolerance, and greed. We beseech thee to bring the blessings of understanding to the families and friends in this and other lands of those who have given their lives that men may be free. Grant, O God, that those closest to the fallen may mingle the pain of those of their losses with the ennobling light of sacrifice for civilization, sacrifice for a better world for this and other generations yet unborn. Grant us too, O God, the courage to so live with the family of nations around the world that the end of strife will be the beginning of enduring peace. Grant us patience and planning with our fellow men and women, a world in which nations may resolve their differences by peaceful means. Touch thy souls of people in every land with the enduring light of wisdom so they may form a brotherhood which will strive to further the arts of peace under laws and the ethics blessed by thy love. Grant us now thy continued blessing upon unity and strength that make victories possible in war, that we may win greater victories of peace. Amen. The Boy Scouts from uh, Troop 313 will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Recover. On this Veterans Day, we are commemorating the services of veterans of all wars. We remember how men and women set aside their civilian pursuits to serve their nation's cause, defending the freedom of mankind and preserving our precious American heritage. We believe our strength on the field of battle, on the supply lines which nourished our armed might, lay in the justice of our cause against the forces of evil. We believe our determination made us better warriors because we fought with our minds and our hearts as well as our bodies. We recognize service to our country and her cause does not end with the termination of military service. We continue our endeavors on behalf of an honorable world peace with a feeling of profound gratitude to God and to the men and women who gave their lives as their part of the cost of this noblest of causes. Out of blood, sweat, and sweat, we learned of purpose, sacrifice, tolerance, bravery, and discipline. These are solid foundation stones upon which a great nation is built. In our continuing quest for an honorable world peace, we must cultivate these values. I'd like to introduce our auxiliary president, Diana Lapierre. Good morning. The waging of war involves more than just the combatants who fight to the death on the field of battle. The fighting forces begin at the fireside and in the house towns. The response, the repercussions of the war's terrible brutality have chilled the heart and dimmed the hopes and dreams of many a loved one left behind on the home front. While the horrors of the battlefield may not have been our experience, we have lived with the terrifying loneliness created to answer an aggressor's challenge. In waging war, we have moved forward with unity of purpose which made us strong, forgetting pettiness, uh, egotism, and pride. Our hearts beat in tune with those in other nations fighting for freedom and dignity and opportunity of mankind. In our constant quest 
for an honorable world peace, there is need for unity of purpose if we truly are to move toward a brighter tomorrow. Our first vice commander, Paul Amatucci. War has taught us the lesson of obedience to command. The game is more than the player, and the ship is more than the crew. This is a greater discipline that we all must pursue if we are to preserve this virtue of obedience in our quest for an honorable world peace. This is obedience to the laws we ourselves make the voluntary discipline of citizenship. Under our system of government, we may change the laws by majority rule. We may persuade our neighbors to new theories or new courses. We may advocate in free elections the choice of veterans or plans. As a good citizen, we follow the choice of the majority, whether that choice be the individual's or not. This is the virtue of discipline, which must be ours in peace. This is the lesson we must learn at home, in school, on the playing fields, in organizations, in the community, and the nation. It is the lesson of voluntary obedience to the decisions of the majority. We must not be unmindful either of the conclusions of other people with whom we have joined in the quest for an honorable world peace. This is the higher order of discipline. I'd like to introduce Roseanne Martin, Colonel Martin, a female veteran representative. The hurts of war fall alike upon those who wear the same uniform, no matter how they may differ in race, creed, or culture. Those who fight together suffer together to achieve a common aim. In the similarity of battle dress, there is a common denominator. The common purpose, the sharing of danger and suffering, which brings in time of war a tolerance which adds strength to the cause. As we put aside the brown and blue and green fabrics that made us one people on the battlefields, we can hold in our minds that tolerance we have achieved. In tolerance, there is progress, progress toward a better and a happier world. Second Vice Commander, Paul Diego. Courage is one of those virtues born of war. The courage of individuals in the face of danger and the courage of nations to protect the weak and punish the aggressor. There is bravery to be shown in peace as well. May we recapture the courage which turned the wilderness into cities that bound men together under government. We can turn slums into comfortable homes, turn uncertainty into certainty, we can reach new heights of civilization and the opportunity for the men and women of this nation if we have the courage to expect and work for a better way of life. There can be romance in this challenge also. The bravery that fights for political, social, economic, and spiritual gains may be more difficult to practice, may be unsung when achieved, but is all the worth more for striving for. Our post-79 adjutant, Phil Jinx. If there be glory in war, it is almost, it is the almost incredible spirit which it engenders. 
Those who offered their lives sacrificed their all with magnificent abandon. Heroism becomes contagious. Yet, too, in warfare, greed and brutality are epidemic. Too often it is these latter which persist in the peace that follows. Let us strive to see the same spirit of self-sacrifice that is cultivated in peace has been exhibit, exhibited excuse me, in war. It behooves us to rear new standards of success, to inspire youth in peace as youth was inspired in war. Public honor must be given where public honor is due, not to the manipulator of the market, the seeker after profit, power, or position, but rather let us honor the heroes of science who alleviate human suffering and carry the greater heights, the standards of civilization. Let us honor those who in public service seek not how much they may secure from the nation, but how much they can give. Let us honor those who devote their lives to that education which will lead our children on to live and laugh and learn and love, as we have only dreamed of doing. Let us honor those veterans who carry into the ordinary affairs of life a noble idealism and sincere capacity for self-devotion. Let us translate the devotion of war into the devotion of peace. Let us will to live so as well as die for our country. In time of peace, we can use the ennobling virtues of war and put behind us its ugliness and suffering. In peace, we shall go forward together to scale new heights of achievement in unity of purpose and sacrifice for the common good in tolerance of those of different faiths and creeds, in bravery to fight for social and economic gains, and in the discipline of, a good, of good citizenship. We shall move forward in the sight of God as a strong nation in a peaceful world. Uh, it's my honor today to introduce Sergeant First Class Lynn Randell, our guest speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Commander, and thank you, citizens of Berwick. I've been coming to these events for over the last 55 years, sometimes in a carriage, but I've been dragged around and, and the people of Berwick have never left South Down. Um, it's, uh, it's an honor to speak, but I'll be brief. We got good weather, but we got a lot of uh, sales out there for Veterans Day, and we gotta get there. I wanna give some honor to these people to my left. That's the honor guard out of Post 79 Berwick. They devote hundreds of hours into training, and what they do is they render honors all year long. And I wanna make note that they're wearing an orange braid. Last Friday, excuse me, that's a different one. Last Monday, they were wearing a black braid at the Veterans Cemetery, rendering honors to a person they never met. The only qualifications for these guys to get in their vehicle, take their training, and go up there was veteran. They can receive a call this afternoon to be somewhere on Monday, I have the utmost respect for them people. But because they have a gold braid, we're on in veterans today. If it was Memorial Day, be a black braid. We're honoring deceased veterans. Okay? Veterans Day, originally called Armistice Day. The 11th day, 
11th hour, 11th day, 11th month to end World War One. A war to end all wars. Could you imagine if we had learned our lesson then? What this war would be? You can only imagine. It's my belief that we probably will never learn our lesson. But it's Armistice Day was to celebrate the end of something bad. 1926, Congress passed a resolution to make it Veterans Day. And that stood for a few years. In 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower said, we can't do Armistice Day anymore because we've had other wars. We want to honor the veterans, of which we're doing today, but we can't call it Armistice Day, so they went to Veterans Day. Because they didn't want to symbolize the end of a single war. Officially, Veterans Day is always November 11th. The 11th hour, 11th day, 11th month. But if it's November 11th is a Sunday, business observe the holiday on Monday. If it's on a Saturday, they have their sales. But we as veterans will always be here on the 11th. In 1968, Congress passed the Uniform Holidays Act, which puts Vietnam put Veterans Day on the fourth Monday in October, whatever date it fell on. I was alive then, and I was part of this then, and I didn't like it then. But in 1975, President Gerald Ford signed a law returning it to November 11th. It's easy. While Memorial Day honors Americans who died in the line of duty, Veterans Day commemorates all soldiers that served in the United States Armed Services honorably. Whether you were in South Dakota, whether you were in Panama, no matter where you served, this is your day. And this is the day to say thanks to one another that we made it. And we're here to honor the ones that didn't. Right now, according to the census, less than 10% of the United States population is a veteran. And according to the latest census, less than 1% of the United States population is serving in the military now. That's just the facts. Several other countries marked the end of World War I on November 11th. Canada, Australia, France, Belgium, they all call it Remembrance Day. The United Kingdom and other Commonwealth countries observe Remembrance Sunday on the second Sunday of November. It is customary to observe two minutes of silence to honor people who died in war. A tradition that originated in South Africa before the end of World War I. This was in the American Legion magazine back cover this month. It's meant to be a poem, and I'll try to do the best I can in poem fashion. It says, V is for veteran. When we're thanked for our service, we reflect on how we served. The way we had to break in boots. The times we gathered up our nerve. The nicknames that made us laugh. The smell of Chili Mac MREs. The pride we felt with that first oath. The friendships that came to be. So at the game, 
when we're asked to stand, it's not applause that's in our sight. I'm looking around for you, my friend, to see who's on my left and right. And I always do that. Okay, so, that being said, Applebee's, <laughs> Buffalo, Buffalo Wild Wings, Chili's, Denny's, Golden Corral, IHOP, Olive Garden, and if you're so inclined, you go down to Kittery Trading Post and you get 10% off if you show that you're a veteran on any item. Hannaford. Texas oh, Roadhouse. Yeah, there's a bunch. Texas Roadhouse. Hannaford. Yeah. What? Hey, guess what? But this is this is a gold braid day. This is honoring veterans. It's not a black braid day. It was an honor to see you here. I know there's veterans standing out there on the sidewalk. And they've been there for the last 50 years and they don't wear the hats. They don't get the license plates. They just go about their business and join us. Uh, we, uh, we have a good group of veterans here. And uh, the next event, I think, is 1 o'clock in South Berwick. Uh, they, they have a Veterans Day celebration. Everybody is welcome to go down to uh, 2 o'clock. Somebody's giving me 2. Is that V for veteran or 2 for... Okay, it's 2 o'clock. I've, I've been through a lot this morning and I'm trying to digest it. But Okay, uh, it's been a privilege, an honor to be part of Post 79 in Berwick. It's been a privilege to be a lifelong resident of Berwick. What you people do on Flag Day, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm going to have um, Chaplain Paul Lapierre close us in prayer. Uncover. <clears throat> Lord of hosts, be with us yet so that we do not forget the noble efforts of the past in war and peace to preserve democracy and maintain order and sustain humanity in ways of peace and social justice. We honor the men and women who have, with courage, sacrificed themselves on all the battlefields of life with compassion and concern for their fellow man. May our memorial to our fallen comrades be a living mem memorial of continuing effort in the causes for which they died. Go with us as we part and enable us by your gracious help to maintain in word the deed, the principles to which we have pledged ourselves as legionnaires. May yours be the glory and your children around the world be the grateful beneficiaries. Amen. Robert. And as Lynn aptly put, uh, we are honored to have our color guard, honor guard with us today. I'd like to introduce them. Detail, present, Hawks. Order, huh?
I would like to thank our Piper Tom Mar Martineau and the rest of the band. Did an amazing job on the pipes, honoring the songs and the hymns of all the services. Again, I would like to thank you. I'm Brian English, Commander, Post 79. It's been an honor to serve in that position. I have a wonderful group of guys that do an outstanding job in doing the preparations for a lot of the work that you see here today. I would like to thank Berwick Community Media, Terry Wright, and, and um, especially for being here. And also like to uh, thank the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and the Cub Scouts for being here and helping with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you to all the veterans who served. And uh, thank you for Leah for being here from the and what you do with Northeast Passage. And for everyone who is a veteran, for everyone who is in the auxiliary, we thank each one of our auxiliary members that are here today. They do so much for us, for the officers of Post 79, for the veterans, and for the families of veterans. Thank you for all that you do to honor and support our veteran community. Uh, we don't take it lightly. I think most of us, when we say, hear the words, thank you for your service said to us, a lot of times my response is, well, thank you for having such a great country to be of service to. So it's an honor to be a part of a great community. It's an honor to be in a great nation. And I thank each one for being here today. And we also have the, our middle school um, has some candy and everything for anyone who would like to stop by. If you're a veteran, please stop by the table to my left uh, after we're done. And thank you each one for coming. And that concludes our ceremony for today. I've been coming to veterans event, events like I said earlier, since I was in a baby carriage. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I decided that I might want to join the military. And as soon as I was old enough, at 17, I did join the military. And uh, the National Guard Armory down the local city of Summersworth, New Hampshire. And uh, at that time, I figured I'd do my three years service and get out. And uh, before I got a chance to do that, they offered me a full-time job, and I ran the Summersworth National Guard Armory for a decade before I moved on to Center Stratford, New Hampshire, to finish my military career. I ended up serving 24 years, and uh, I don't remember any bad times now. I've been with Post 79, the Borough American Legion, 32 years on the books, 42 years off the books because my active duty and wartime service didn't match up with the American Legion's entitlement base. I was on active duty during Lebanon and Granada, and, but it took the American Legion until 91 to accept that period of service for eligibility. So here I am and I do everything I can to support veterans.